us now is the former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, William Taylor. Ambassador, happy new year to you. Thanks for joining us. It is anything but a happy new year in Ukraine, except for the incredible spirit and resilience of this country. Andrew, you're exactly right. Um, I've been in touch with um, several of my friends over the new year holiday. Um, they're more determined than ever. Um, even their children. I was asking one woman about her, her kids, and she says, you wouldn't believe how determined, how patriotic our children are. So they, all these attacks on civilian targets that the Russians are, are undertaking um, has only gone to make the Ukrainians more determined to win. So the, the Russian Defense Ministry today said that dozens of Russian servicemen died after four HIMARS artillery warheads struck what they are calling a provisional base. Does that indicate that the equipment that the U.S. is providing to Ukraine is making a difference? We should point out this was not within the borders of Russia. It was in a Russian-held part of eastern Ukraine. Correct, Andrew. And the answer is yes. These weapons are making a big difference. They've been making a difference since last summer when they first arrived. They, these weapons, these HIMARS, uh, and others um, have allowed the Ukrainians to go on the offensive and to push the Russians back, way back, toward the borders. They're pushing the Russians out of their country. That's, that's, what, the, that's what the goal uh, for the Ukrainians is, to push the Russians out. HIMARS are attacking uh, targets, military targets. That's the difference, Andrea, between the Russians and the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians are attacking military targets. This was clearly a military target. It was a big ammo dump. Um, that the Russians mistakenly put their troops right next to. So that was a blunder, another blunder by the Ukrainians. The, the Russians, on the other hand, attacked civilian targets, unarmed civilian targets. The, the, my friend that I was talking to last night, she could hear, in the middle of the night, weapons exploding, ammunition exploding, bombs exploding near her home in the middle of, of last night. So the, that's, what, that's what the Russians are attacking. They're attacking unarmed civilian targets. Uh, Vladimir Putin said oh, in a very, well, la he had a very tough New Year's message to his people. But last week he said that he was willing to negotiate. How does one read Vladimir Putin? Is this all bluster? It is bluster. Um, he says that he's willing to negotiate if the, the Ukrainians will cede him the territory that the Russians now illegally occupy. So he wants the Rus he wants the Ukrainians to give up, uh, to surrender, um, to, to, to give in to his pressure um, to, to take over 20 percent of the Ukrainian territory. So the Ukrainians are not interested in that kind of negotiation. The Ukrainians have said they'll negotiate once the Russians are out of their country. And do you see an end, end game any way? Uh, there has to be a diplomatic solution at some point, but Ukraine is certainly not going to concede anything right now. They're winning on the ground. And Vladimir Putin doesn't seem to be an honest broker at all in talk about diplomacy. No doubt, no doubt. Um, and exactly as you say, the Ukrainians have the momentum. They are pushing the Russians out. They're not interested in a ceasefire that would freeze the Russians in their own country. No, they're interested in pushing the Russians out. And when that happens, then you're right. There could be some discussions, some negotiations. There are items to be resolved about return of, of prisoners of war, return of all of the, of the civilians and the children that have been taken into Russia. There are lots, a lot of things to be, to be discussed um, in, in a negotiation after the Russians are out of the country.